people. We're going to uh, put forth a little thing here about uh, coccidia medication and using it on goats, turkeys, chickens, farm animals. As you can see, this bag right here, that's a bag that you get from the store. It's called uh, Corid. It's Amproilium. It's uh, essentially the same chemical you get when you get a product called Albon. Albon is usually what the veterinarian will give you. This will allow you to uh, take care of your own animals at home the way farmers do. This is in no way intended to replace a veterinarian, make a diagnosis, or do anything else. It's just to allow you to properly break down how to use the medication. And uh, a bag of Corid comes in a 10 ounce container. There's three methods you can use when you're treating this disease. There's a prevention formula you use, which is, takes 21 days. There's a treatment method, which only takes 5 days. Both of those are oral and used in water. And then there's a cure, also called a drench. And that's a 3-day treatment. We're going to tell you how to break down your... Uh, your solution to make all three kinds. The first kind we're going to make is going to be the, the, the five day, well, five day. It's going to be a five day treatment and then we'll go into the prevention. As you know, there are 28.35 grams per ounce. You need 2.26 grams per gallon of water for a treatment dose. If you want to do a three-day drench, you add three ounces of Corid to one quart of water. That will give you 32 doses. And in those 32 doses, one ounce of that drench is equal to a hundred pounds of body weight. So if you use a 10 pound syringe, you'll have enough to do a thousand pounds of body weight, which is more than you'll ever need for chickens or turkeys or any type of fowl. It may be enough or it may not be enough for the amount of goats that you'll have to determine. But uh, that one quart will do 3,200 pounds of body weight. And on your 21 day prevention, 10 ounces of Corid, which is a full bag, will make 250 gallons of water. Or that. And if you want to make a, a five day treatment stock solution, that you can pour in existing water, you're going to want to add one ounce of Corid to that stock solution. So, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. The first three uh, gallons we're going to make, um, we're going to set up for prevention. The treatment, I mean, sorry. We're going to set it up for treatment, so we're going to weigh out our Corid. Since we're only making one gallon of Corid, we're going to use uh, 0 0.567 grams of Corid per gallon. So, these things come in handy so you don't get any moisture in your Corid. We'll turn on our little gram scale. Well, before we turn our gram scale in, 
I guess I better find the plug and plug it in. There we go. Okay, it zeroed out. Now we put our container on here. It weighs 8 grams. We tear it. So now it's down to zero. Now we want our .567 grams of Corid. Okay, and we're good there. I hurt my wrist again somehow, people. I have no idea how I did it. So, things are going to be a little shaky here as I do this. That's one gallon taken care of. Two gallons. Now, looks like I didn't get quite enough out of that one. enough. There we go. Now we put this into our third gallon here. By the way, these are all oral. These will go in a chicken water all by themselves. They won't uh, have any water added to them at all. This will be ready pre-made, ready to go. And now the next thing we're going to make is uh, we're going to make a stock solution. And for the stock solution, I have so many papers around here, it's unbelievable. I don't want the drench, I want the stock solution. Is that here? Is it here? No. Where did I just put that? I can't find what I did with my stock solution. It figures, right? Um, it's probably on my other my other paper book that I had here. Yep, there we go. Now, for this one, to make the stock solution, I just made it yesterday. You would think that I would remember it, but I don't. Oh. Scale shut off because I took too long. And we'll tear it out again. Way. 
And if you feel safer, you can wear gloves. I don't mind it getting on me. It just uh, keeps me uh, keeps me parasite free, so I'm happy with that. And then you take your cord, and you're gonna wanna seal it back up for future use. As you can tell, there's still a good amount left. them all labeled C1, C2, C3 so we know that uh, they're supposed to go straight in a chicken waterer. They're not supposed to go anywhere else. It takes a little time and a little effort but Using the 20% powdered saves you a lot of money. You can get it in pellet form where you feed it out as a pellet. You can also get it in a 9.6 made solution. See which number is that? Number one. Let's put that on number one. This is number two. But you can also get it in a bigger bottle in a gallon like this. This was at one time a gallon of Corid and uh, it's super expensive when you compare it to doing it yourself. Doing it to yourself, you save, you save a boatload of money. You just have to go through a little bit extra hassle. But the savings is well worth it. Unless you're just like a hobby farmer and you only have one or two goats and you don't have any chickens or other livestock. You don't have any turkeys. You don't have anything like that. Remember, coccidia is spread by a number of different things. It can be spread by a sparrow or a robin or a cardinal or any songbird flying over your property can uh, deposit a nice little turd right into your water dish and then boom your animals contract coccidia then uh, as the parasite develops inside their body they start suffering from the most noticeable thing is diarrhea and the smell of the diarrhea is very sweet. It's not as sweet of a smell as parvovirus that you have in dogs, but it's pretty close. You can definitely tell the difference because uh, when we were raising American Bulldogs, we also had to deal with coccidia on a, a pretty often basis because instead of taking the chance, of uh, contracting coccidia, we uh, we took our time and we did preventatives all the time. Plus, if you get a puppy and it had coccidia when it was young and it was treated for it, once that female is bred and she has her puppies, coccidia will come back. So you should you should be ready to treat them for coccidia when it returns. Just like every puppy in the world is born with roundworms, no matter, no matter how good you wormed the female before pregnancy, um, all the puppies will be born with roundworms. 
So that's something you want to take into consideration. But since we're not talking about dogs, and we're talking about farm animals, this is now what you call a stock gallon. This will treat 200 and, uh, no, excuse me, this will treat 125 gallons of water. So when I do the chickens, I will have uh, extra that I will put in their pool that they swim in because we have a pool for the ducks to swim in and uh, it's very easy for chickens or anything else to drink out of that pool and uh, should that happen and there be cock city in there you would just be wasting your time going through all these motions and the last thing you want to do is be wasting a bunch of time that you don't have to. You really don't want to do that. As you can see right here, that's uh, some powdered coccidia that hasn't mixed. Some corid, not coccidia. It's corid that hasn't thoroughly mixed. You want to make sure that it's pretty well mixed up and uh, it'll mix more as you carry it but it's always a good idea and uh, we'll clean up the rest of the mess later we'll put this back in our vet kit where it belongs and uh, hopefully this has helped you out if you uh, if you need a mathematical breakdown of it written down on a paper, um, I'll try and get Hag to do that. And anyone who requests it, we can uh, send that out by email to you. And uh, hopefully that will help everyone out. Hopefully this farm video has helped you some in the care of your animals. Please remember I am not a veterinarian. I don't claim to be a veterinarian. I've been involved with dogs my entire lifetime. I've been involved with farm animals since the age of seven and I'm an old man now so I do have quite a bit of experience and uh, you should always have uh, certain things around your farm to help you out like you should have some ringers lactate you should have a 50 millimeter syringe uh, a 12 to 14 gauge needle to rehydrate things if you don't know how to use if you don't know how to use an IV properly you can always go under the skin and you can rehydrate an animal that way. There's many different things you can do. All right, everyone. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and it's been of some help. Thanks for watching and we will see you again. Until next time, it's me and the hag. We're out of here. Peace. Take care.